We are hey, live. live. How about that? There's there, there's great things in the world. Hi, I am David Shapiro, and this is the long form Monday Sunday night long form improv jam. Inner City's long form Woo! jam. We have a small but powerful group tonight, uh, and we're so glad everybody's here. Uh, we got a lot of our friends who are uh, off doing other improv things this weekend. But uh, I want to let's get the whole thing started. Why don't we? Because that's what we're here to do. Please stand by. I'm going through this real quick. I'm just going going through this. Hey, we randomly assigned you to teams. Hey, we used to have four teams. Tonight, we only have two teams. We're starting with a musical team tonight. So be on on your toes. And then we'll come the non-musical team. We're going to do a montage. Not 15-minute sets, 25-minute sets. Wow, 25-minute sets to play. Uh, and we're going to do sweep tag out. So you could say sweep, come on up and say sweep. If you want, you could tag somebody out, turn on your camera and say, tag somebody out. You could do time changes, whatever. Hey, somebody's going to be timing you in a two minutes. We're going to tell you when you have time, two minutes left. Uh, so that's the time to start wrapping it up. You know, they're going to call time on you. Um, if you're in the background and you have your microphone on, we might mute you. Most people know not to do that. Colin White says, don't get muted. Uh, you hide non-video participants makes it nice look good. We're streaming on Facebook. Isn't that nice? Uh, sensitive topics. Try to stay away from these. You see them all. You, you know what we don't like. Uh, just stay away from it. You don't know how everybody is. Uh, if you go there a little bit, it's okay, but just try to stay away. But don't go to this ones at all. Don't flash. Don't rate no isms. No thing that makes a person's identity the butt of the joke. But we know what's banned. Uh, if you have a problem, let's call a timeout. We'll just switch to the next scene. Uh, anytime anybody wants, let us know. Um, these are your tips. We've been doing it for so long. Speak at a time. Use your actual face. Manage. Be nice. Don't worry about the lag. Uh, the, when the timer gets up there, come on out. We're all here to have fun. Uh, stick around to the end. We're going to have a group game. Uh, we'll have <laughs> some announcements for next week. And tonight we have Crate. Featuring uh, from Austin, Texas, and the London, UK, Kristen and Kate. Uh, So they'll be here in a little bit. And scene, that is it. I think I got, I think I had the world record for the time. And uh, so right now, we're going to go back to team one, which is our first musical team. And the host is going to be Angel. Hi, hello, hello everybody. <laughs> yeah, so so let's know our first team of the evening, and today exceptionally it will be the musical team, and uh, our musical director is Mark Anderson. Yeah, he's ready right now, and uh, there is Donovan also. It's he's ready to do the timekeeping. Uh, yes, he will inform you when you'll have only two minutes left, and this set will have twenty-five minutes. Whoa. And so we will have David Shapiro from Chicago. I think I know this man. And there will be also Jennifer Prescott directly from Connecticut. Yeah, Jennifer. Also, Angel Canis from Sevilla, Spain. Someone I have an idea who she is. She may be. And also Brian Sebi from Wheaton, Illinois. Yeah, we are the team one. Oh, uh, we are team one. Uh, somebody else get somebody else get the get, not me. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, all right. We, may we have a suggestion? One or two words, even a phrase for that? Please, someone out there. Miss you. Miss you. I heard me. Miss, oh. miss you. Yes, Thank you. Miss you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Miss you. <clears throat> So um, I uh, I missed you at the bus stop. I missed you. Yeah. Really? What happened? John, you know, when I left the bus stop, I looked at this town and I said, "Oh my God, I have to stay here. I cannot go with John." You know. So you left me. 
you, 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 I mean, you could have sent me a text. You could have let me know any different number of ways, Facebook Messenger, anyways. But I was sitting at the bus stop for two hours. John, look, it's deeper than that, okay? It's deeper than any message, than any. It's just. I was sure I don't want to stay with you anymore. Break up by traffic doesn't make sense. Breaking up with me at rush hour. What's the point? The bus stop is not the place for me. It's not the place for both of us. John, I have to go. We live the great life now. The bus must go on without me. You missed the 435 to Frankfurt and the 550 to Middleburg. And the 525 that goes to Centerville to Nashville. John, I will miss your eyes, your smell, <laughs> your touch, but I cannot hide. That here in the town there is someone I love even more than you. Who? 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 Is it the bus driver? Which one? Yes, it's Peter, the bus driver. <laughs> Sweep, Peter. Hey, hey, Pete. Yo, what's up? Whoa, it's really good to have a lunch break, ain't it? Sure is. Mm. Those tuna sandwiches sure yeah. are hitting the spot. Mm. Gotta love a good tuna. Mm. Are they so, Petey, uh, I noticed that you were a little late clocking in last week. Mm -hmm. Well, late night leads to a late morning sometimes. Yeah, yeah. You know, I noticed you had a funny smirk or a, maybe a little glint in your eye or maybe a little mm, smile on your face when you came in that morning. Not gonna lie, had a good night. You ever taken the 525 from San Echo Middleton? Ah, I've taken a lot of buses. I've taken, I've taken most of the routes. I've been on the road. But what are you and flying here, Jenny? I just want to know. Honk, 
Hong. Well, I'm just driving my bus all around this whole town. Making stops at the corners and at the bus stops. Beep, beep. Beep, beep. That's how I get the traffic to move. I beep, beep. Beep, beep. Daddy, I was so afraid. I was dreaming about bases and train stations and special stations. Oh. Yes, I, uh, <clears throat> I'm glad you did. Because it's horrible <sighs> in there. It's, it's terrible in there. I can't believe, can't believe you got out. <sighs> Yeah, Daddy, Daddy, it was like a nightmare. And, and then there was a moment when I thought maybe my Daddy will go away someday, one day. But how? We can't, we can't go through, we can't go through the bus station. You, you just came there. The train station? That's worth it. Yeah, and the airport? special station. The airport? Come on. The airport. Uh, no, no, no. The death port, really. We, we should just stay here. Yeah, Daddy. Yeah, yeah. You know, because here in the town, I have lots of friends, and 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 Mummy, uh, she still loves you, even if sometimes she is mad at you. Okay. Okay. Well, I can't. Okay. Well, as long as it's the two of us here, your mother shouldn't be coming over either we shouldn't we actually we should be alone just the two of us oh my god daddy you don't love her anymore no i don't i don't i'm sorry to, to, to look this this event to to bring this all together and bring it to a forefront but when i went on vacation last month when I went on my business vacation, I yeah. didn't miss your mom at all. Oh. No, I didn't miss her at all. Stop, Daddy. I don't think she missed me either. We used to be three. One, two, three. It's the number of the family. It you, mommy and me, daddy, if you leave it's a nightmare, a real nightmare. We were a, we were a triangle. Three equal size. But then your mother found another point and started to make other shapes with another point. My point of the triangle said, No, 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 no. I, you're not going to take away my masculinity like that. This is a confusing time. It's a night. Nightmare. It's a nightmare. I'm not good in geometry, but it was you and mommy I used to see. The house was full of love, and now she will leave. It's a nightmare. 
Hurry all night. Hi, honey. Mommy. Hey, sweetheart. I'd like you to introduce you to the other point of my quadrilateral. <laughs> oh, mommy. Maybe a parallelogram or something. All right. Some sort of geometric shape. I'm living the life. It's too confusing. Oh, there he what? is. What's up? Biff. That's As you can tell, you I'm a bodybuilder, weightlifter. Uh-huh. Oh. a lot of angles. Look at my this chiseledness. Is a love triangle. This is like a love quadrilateral. Oh my god. But I still so, love you, my love. I still love you, my dear. Oh mommy, I think I, I should study more geometry to understand this nightmare. It's okay. Not a nightmare. Not a nightmare. Let's sweep. <clears throat> um, is anybody concerned that the driver hasn't stopped for any any of the stops? And the, there is no bathroom on board this. Just yeah. problematic. None, none, none. Of you, you're, you're not concerned, honestly. He's, he has not looked. I mean, he's looking just with his eye. I could see that. I can just, see him. I can see him in the rearview mirror. Can you see his eyes? They're, they're flipping I mean, around. They're yeah. like, is he, does he know? Does he know that we're talking about him? Can he hear us? We, we should probably be more sotto voce. You know, there's only like a few of us in the bus. I can hear everything you're saying. The acoustics oh. are surprisingly good in this bus. Oh, we were maybe we were talking about a bus driver from earlier today. Sorry. Mm, that's good. Yeah. Ooh. How do you know that wasn't me? Oh, geez. Maybe I'm every bus driver. Maybe I'm not none of them. Are you every bus driver? Are we you... all driving the bus or are none of us driving the bus? I'm sorry, man. I read this like podcast on like existentialism and now I can't get out of my head. He's really philosophical. I am. Like, what is a bus stop anyway? What is rush hour? What? What are we doing here? On this earth? Am I destined to just make right turns and left turns? Go straight. What is a bus stop? What is a passenger? My mind is expanded. Don't know what they all mean. Public transportation issues. Public transportation issues. This is the end of the line for us. Do we have to get off the bus? Why? Sweet. <laughs> hey, welcome here to the bus drivers meeting. We have a lot to talk tonight. Ha. Ho. Carl, you're here. Look, 
I heard there are some bus drivers creating a lot of issues in our city. That's terrible. And there is your name here on the complaints. Well, I've heard that there are a lot of stupid passengers in this city as well, along with really stupid management. Oh, that's that's amazing. That's amazing because maybe you will stop driving the bus and you also, you also, Jonathan. Jonathan, I know you also have been rude to the customers. Well, they're a bunch of no nuts. They wanted, they, they start pulling the train, like, oh, I want to get off. Oh. Ah. Damn, they should just wait for their regular stop. You know what, you both, now you are forbidden to drive a bus, a car, anything. You have to walk all day long around the city to understand the importance of the a bus. Do you have that authority? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Here are my keys. I'll just be there. I've been driving a bus since I was 18. Started driving them over in Korea, then did it in Vietnam. Now I'm 65. You're telling me I gotta walk for a living. Things didn't turn out the way I had planned. Hey, but uh. John, let's look on the bright side here. We're gonna get it straight. When I hire you, I have big expectations. I could see but is full of happy people and no temptations. When I hired you, I gave you the power, so it was like a flower, and you just broke it. Now, just walk, just walk, and learn. I'm trying. Just walk and learn how hard it is to take everything on your feet. No one's asking me what route this is. No one's asking me what, what's what, if this goes, bus goes to Main Street. This is awesome. Just walk and learn. I love being a bus driver now. I'm just going to walk places. I won't miss Me. it at all. Sweep. Uh. See so you checking me out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. oh, here, let me grab that for you. Man, I've been so fit since I gave up my bus route. I've been like really working the cardio and the walking I can, and the I can weight tell. oh you look great man you look oh look at him oh man okay. really working i gotta tell you love changes a person 
before I thought that all there was in life was lifting. And then I found the love of my life. And although her husband and her kids were mad, like I found that like I can lift even more because of love. Just love that bar there, man. Love it. Yeah, love like buoys your muscles. It yeah. buoys your muscles. Or, like- or actually, you know what? Here, let me spot that for you. Got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Get him, got get him, it. get him quick. Yeah, I got him. You're good. Uh oh. You all right, guy? Yeah, I'm just going to, I just got to do three more sets, three more reps, yeah. the two just, more sets of these pull ups. Just, just. I'm doing a little kickboxing. Uh, don't don't push yourself too much, man. Because if you push yourself too hard, then you die. And if you die, you can't love. Unless love is booing him, because he's he's lifting a lot, a lot of weight right now. Love will lift you higher and by lifting higher i mean weights love will buoy you up and by buoy you up i mean weights that's right when you're lifting you're loving your muscles but if you love too much you're gonna get trouble I can see that you are all too tired but that's okay you can come in on the bridge if you'd like. That could be the way. But I don't, don't love the pull up bar. I hate the pull up bar. Tell it like it is. <laughs> Lift your love. You tried the Nautilus. It's less active resistance. Nautilus. Now won't have to, won't have to use that pole bar ever again. You now, do you. you. Lift what you love. Lift what I love. Love what you lift. Love what you lift. Just take it from me. Take it from Biff. Love yourself. And it will lift you. You look beefy enough to lift a bus right now. Just go lift all the buses. And scene, yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. That was our team Ooh. number one. Ooh. 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 And Jennifer, say it's your first time doing musical improv? No. Or, no, or just no, Zoom improv? But you did great. So please. Yay. More. Not my first time, but I'll be back. Okay, cool. <laughs> All righty, I'm still on screen. All right, what do we have coming up? I don't have it. I don't have it set up on my screen, so I better do that. It's on the menu. I think I'm timing this, correct? Um, yeah, not yet. Almost. Oh, I mean, I I'm supposed to. Be. Yeah, yeah, Jenny. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right, hey, let's. You know what? I like sharing my screen. 
I'm going to have to stop your computer sound. Oh, thank you, Michael uh, Anderson, for, oh, for doing yes. the, our music for that. The, that was our one musical uh, set of the night. So thank you very Ooh, much. Yay, thank, thank you. you. Mark, can you drop your, your Mark, Venmo in there Mark, real quick Mark, for, Mark, one more time Mark. before your PayPal before you leave? I think we already have it. It's already somewhere in the chat. And by the way, hey, look, everybody. We have an Etsy shop because we have stuff to sell. Most of us, we, a lot of us have these uh, fancy little mugs. Ooh. Keep much in them. It's actually wrappers of candy. Of candy. But I shouldn't have. Hey, Brian has one. That's what's that's what's happening on the menu. Uh, so we got some people who jumped 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 in. Uh, looks like uh, who was that? Josh and Don. Uh, we're only doing two sets tonight. That was our first one. Was our first music set. So you both, whoever just jumped in, you are in the second set. Uh, our second uh, non musical. Uh, our first and only non musical set of the night. So we have a small crowd tonight. Uh, so coming up, and actually I am. Doing the announcing of this team, oh. and Jennifer Prescott is doing your timing. And there's 25 minutes uh, that you'll have. So here is the team. Turn on your cameras. Mindy Ballantyne from Mendocino. Donovan Santiago from New York. Kevin Wilcock from New York. Karen Klein from South Texas. Karen Klein Tardif, I should say. Josh Previn from Los Angeles. And Don Slovin from New York, New York. Sounds so nice, they oh, named it New York. And uh, like I said, Jennifer, there's your timer. All right, got it. Fun. Can somebody please tell us a suggestion about anything? Mystery. 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 Thank you, mystery. Thank you. Mystery. Yeah, detective. I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure who killed Jim Bigelow. Hey, I don't pay you to not be sure. What the? Come on, buddy. Look, Detective Jameson, I just got here. I'm actually not even supposed to be working a night shift, you know? Smoke? No, this gas station is too dangerous. Uh, that's the thing. That's why somebody would kill John Bigelow, Bigel Mr. Bigelow. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. A second ago, you said, wait a minute. I said, wait a minute you... a minute ago. <laughs> Listen, buddy. I brought you into the force. Are you playing straight with me? Oh, I'm playing straight with you. Look, are you saying that I killed John Bigelow? Why? Because he's, he's with my wife and kids right now, or he was with my wife and kids. I have no reason to kill John Bigelow. Plus, I'm a nine year veteran on the force. Yeah, maybe nine years two veteran. Nine plus nine. That doesn't make sense. No, I'm not an 18 year veteran. I'm just a nine year veteran uh, detective. Look. Look, I don't. What? Did you kill John Bigler or not? I need to know. It was a man with a funny hat and a mustache right. named Al. Al Kerselser. You know, I'm starting to regret. And I've been driving around with you in this new car that has two front wheels and only one back wheel. Uh, the old three wheel car. Yeah. How's your, how, how's your wife and kids? Thank you. I've been waiting for you to ask. Jeez, yeah. man. Um, pretty good. Pretty good. My kid wants to be an oboe player, but oboes are expensive, man. Mm. Your kid could do that. Your kid has the your kid has the mind. I taught him in high school years ago. Yeah. Tell you out, Donovan. Tell you out, Donovan. Honey, I know that you're really concerned about the kid and his oboe, but I mean you've got this like murder case, you know, and you keep coming home and you're like, is Johnny really gonna play the oboe? And I gotta say, I think you should be focusing on the Bigelow case and not so concerned about the oboe. 
First of all, Bigelow rhymes with oboe. Bigelow bow. I'm just worried. I mean, it's a reed. In, is it a reed instrument? I because those. I think those reeds. I feel like you have to keep buying new ones. I, they, I, uh, I just don't think that's really what you should be focusing on. I mean, you know, Bigelow's poor family, like, you know, I mean, he was shot to death in broad daylight outside of the post office. You're right. You're right. Somebody had to see something. You know what? You're right. What am I, how could I be spending all this time? Violin could work, by the way. I'm just saying, I, I, but I'm going to get back to the Chief. Of my business. Officer, I need. Officer, I just got hit by a three-wheeled vehicle by a guy who was playing an oboe. Is that against the law? Playing an oboe in this part of town? Oh, it's not against the law, but if there were any justice, it would be. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I he hurt me. He hurt me on my funny, my funny bone. Well, I'll tell you what, just go over there to the precinct and tell them what happened. Can I, can I give the report to you and then you'll go to the police station and to- I'm busy, I'm busy tracking down the, the worst piece of work and Wow. That I've seen in many a year. Wow. Yeah, he tore the tags off some mattresses all while playing the saxophone. Oh my God, the city is going to hell in a handbasket. I tell you, next thing you know, we're going to be getting percussion in this part hey, of town. Don't even, don't even talk that way. Cut, cut to that that guy do, doing the uh, the crime. Hey, put your hands Woo! up. It's I've got a flute and I'm not afraid to play it. Hey, hey, hey. Now we can do a duet. There's a lot of tags here that we can tear off these mattresses. Oh man, the piano player just left. <laughs> what? Got another one. Oh, look, hold on. I'm a traffic officer. I'm not even supposed to be here today. Oh. My wife got sick and I had to replace her. Hmm. Re replace her with what? With me. That's how it works here in Cincinnati. When one cop gets sick, another cop has to step in. It could be a cop who knows who defuses chemical weapons, or it could be a traffic cop. It doesn't matter. I don't. I don't. I'm a traffic cop, dude. Oh. Oh. Okay. Okay. So I'm not. I'm not in trouble then. Playing yeah, my saxophone here. No, I mean, but I put a. I put a ticket on your your uh your van. Okay, all right, uh, a, a ticket for playing saxophone? Yeah, no, oh, no, no, look, uh, look, we got off on the wrong foot. Let me draw my, I'm Marty, Marty Feldman. Hi, I'm Winifred Winner. Look, maybe I could take you out to the Toys R Us down the street and- uh... Uh, Hey, are all of us drivers are confused. You keep making hand motions Oh. about where- Oh, sorry. Where, are you- you're a traffic cop, aren't you? Marty Feldman. Oh. I'm filling in for oh, my wife who's sick. Oh, oh, okay. Sorry, my yeah. bad. Yeah. Is, uh, it, it, could he come, could, uh, like, is anybody invited to Toys R Us or is this more of a date kind of thing while your well, wife is- I mean, I'm not gonna go on a date, I have a wife. Oh, you know what, I forgot I had a wife. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah! Oh. Shit. Uh, I better go, yeah, hey, look. Uh, here's my number, 911. I'll see you later. <laughs> okay, thanks. We bring in Joshua. Hello. Are you the detective that's in charge of the Bigelow oboe case? Yes, I am. I, I have some insider information. You see, I work down at the Kit Kat Club, and there's this fellow, Mr. Santiago. He says he's a cop. 
but he's been hitting on all the women and men down there. The <clears> piano <throat> players, the violinist. I think something's up. I think he's a scorned man. Whoa. You remind me of a character I once dated in a Tennessee Williams play. <laughs> That's funny you should mention Tennessee Williams. He and my mama were really good friends. No, no, no. I'm sorry to interrupt. I'm so sorry. <gasps> it's you. How I saw dare you? Karen. I saw I, Karen at the Kit Club Club talking to Mr. Bigelow just the other day. She was harder than me. I was in the back room. I was stalking the gin and Mindy. She was talking. She was talking to Mr. Bigelow about his oboe. How dare you? How dare you? It was you that put the poison in his drink. Nobody said it was poison. <gasps> Let's get out of these bumper cars and talk about this appropriately. Yes, the sparks Anything are going to light over there. Fire. You're both under arrest for being <laughs> just the kind of people this community needs. So you're going to arrest me and put me in that stinky old dirty jail when I've done nothing wrong. Nothing at all. I've seen Karen trying to poison an innocent man because he wouldn't have her. That's why she was jealous. Officer, you're going to frisk me first. Oh, <laughs> whoa. I'll take out Karen and Josh. Hey, welcome to prison. Yeah. You look, you look sad. Hey, you can talk to me. Dude. Well, I just don't want to be, um, I, I don't want anybody to offend my body while I'm in here. How do Jesus I ever protect Christ. myself? Well, this isn't Oz. Look, <laughs> we just, we play chess and cards in here. We lift a lot of weights. All right. The <laughs> movies get it wrong. The TV shows get it all wrong. Now look, here's a weight. All right. You should. Oh. Oh, Lord, please. Now, hey, hey, you look like you're a tough man and you might know some secrets. Do you know anything about Mr. Bigelow's death outside of the post office? Because that's why I'm in here. Karen threw me under the table. Oh, Karen's, they always do that. Look, <laughs> he knows who, he knows all about Bigelow. As a matter of fact, he's seen more shit than I've seen shit. And I've seen a lot of shit. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a prison. What do you expect? <laughs> hey, I'll leave you two alone. Hey, Warden, kiss this. Yeah. What do you want? Hey, Mr. Warden, you don't know <laughs> anything about Mr. Bigelow's death, do you, outside of the post office? How much does it mean to you? Oh, it means the world. I'd be happy to play my flute for you if you give me some information. Oh, Maybe a mint julep. You've been playing that flute I bought you, huh? Mm-hmm. Was well, that that's, you? That's a, that's a good thing because, you know, it, 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 to bring in music into any institution uh, will be a, a very a profitable in a variety of different ways, not to mention enriching, if you will, uh, many of the subjects, including the children and the prisoners. You that's know any Johnny true. Cash? That's Oh, yeah. Now, see, we're seeing eye to eye. Now, can you please give me some information about Mr. Bigelow? Because I must be set free. I do not belong in here. Well, you have to speak. Tag out Don? Huh? Tag out Don? Yeah, that's me. So, welcome to your parole hearing. We've been going over your case. Now, of course, it turns out you weren't the one who killed uh, Bigelow, but during your time in prison, you've been doing a lot of flute playing. So, uh, you know, these things must uh, be weighed when deciding whether to let you out of prison. The fact that you're innocent, the fact that you've taken up a woodwind instrument. 
But you see, I, I'm, there must be some sort of confusion again. A flute is not a woodwind instrument, sir. Well, see that that that's where you're wrong, and making that mistake means you're going to have to be in there for another ten years. Parole Karen! denied. Karen. So, how's it feel on the other side of that glass? How dare you come in here and accost me behind this glass, you you harlot! I tell you what, it might have been me, it might not have been me, <laughs> but I sure as hell ain't no flautist. How dare you. I will see you put behind bars before I die, Karen. I'm the you one can... that ratted your flute playing out to the DA. That's it. Get out of here, Karen. Bring me, get me on the phone with that that officer I'll take out Karen it's, it's my one phone call it's me the district hey. attorney hey we're in person hey. right now I did a tag we're in person look okay yeah yeah well I, I still I'm behind bars so I, oh yeah okay that's fine yeah look yeah hey I need you to follow Karen we got to get to the bottom of this I am positive that she killed Bigelow she did it I've gotten all kind of insider information in here and I know that she did it follow her wait follow her everything she does the warden's here with me in my office right now <laughs> as well. Okay? Look, it wasn't Karen who killed Bigelow. It was a man named Kilcox. Huh? That's just, I don't know. I don't make up the criminal's names. I'm just a DA. Jesus Christ. Oh, God. Well, can we blame it on Karen? Can we frame Karen for it? Because oh, I do not like her. Can I go, everyone bring in Karen? Yes. Well, <laughs> I killed your Mr. Bigelow for you. Now I want <laughs> my payment. <laughs> Honey, the gin is still making. It'll be ready in about 10 to 12 days. I don't care about the gin right now. I want the other part of my payment. But One those piccolo. Those reeds the piccolos, they're so expensive. I killed Bigelow for a piccolo. <laughs> Look. Maybe you should take up another instrument. How about the bongos? I hear they're real popular. My daddy was a woodwind player. My mother was a woodwind player. If I went to percussion, I would be tarnishing the heritage of a whole lot of family members. My okay. sister played the cymbals once, just kind of tapped one on the edge. We disowned her. She's now living in the city as a xylophonist. You slash. A flute is a woodwind instrument. I looked it up. Yeah. I, I, I know. Even though it's not made of wood. <laughs> I know. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the wrong. Uh... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, wrong room. Yeah. Oh. Honey, you're in the wrong speakeasy. Okay, <laughs> now look. The point is, I can't afford a piccolo until I sell the gin, and the gin won't be ready for 10 to 12 days. Now, I am not known for substandard. Gin. Well, then I'll be back in 10 to 12 so days. And if Thank you, Kevin. Ah, uh, so you asked for Piccolo. It is me. The Dragon Ball <laughs> yeah. Z character, Piccolo. Yes, and I'm, I'm uh, what I need to do is I need to trade all the gin here that I have. See all these cases of gin back yes. here in my warehouse? Yes. For yeah. Piccolo. Yes, I am Piccolo. Piccolo. Yes, yes. I need you to go see a fella named Kilcox. 
<laughs> Wait, I'm trading myself, a living, breathing alien <laughs> being, for an item? That that doesn't seem. Well, I'm he insisted saying. on Piccolo. You're the only Piccolo I could find. I mean, I caught you, right? Look, I'm also an actor, so I can I can go along with it, but I'm not going to be, you know, you know what I mean. If they're going to, if you're going to. Okay. Trade. So your motivation, your motivation is Woodwind and Piccolo. I'm Piccolo. Yes, you're Piccolo. <laughs> Tag out here, Donovan, and bring in Joshua. Mr. Mr. Officer, I have discovered a thing that Miss Karen has done. She is now trading people for items. Sentient beings, she is trading for bottles of gin. This is totally illegal. You must arrest her now and put her behind jail. Let me write it down first. Oh, Lord. Well, I've been moved to the traffic division. So as soon as this this red mm -hmm. light gets fixed. Ah! Can... Oh, Fuck I'm... you. Like I was saying, I've been, but as soon as I get off this traffic beat, I'm going to follow up on that. That sounds, you sound like you're the real McCoy. Oh, I am. And she's trading people for, for, for bottles of gin. That's like, that, that was done in the 1700s. That's not illegal now. Yeah. No, it can't, it can't be legal. It's, Please do something about it. I'm on parole. I only got a little bit of time. You're on parole? What are you doing out here if you're on parole? I was framed. I was framed by Karen. That's why I've been keeping an you eye on framed? For Mr. Bigelow, oh. who played the piccolo. Well, now, Karen's trying to get an oboe. And I don't know. Hey, you. How did you escape my jail? No, I'm on parole. Mr. Oh, Warden, okay. can you give me a pardon, Mr. Warden? Thank you. You've been doing a lot of rhymes, Missy. Well, it's about that time for a rhyme, for don't rhymes. you think? I'll tell you what. I'm not going to haul your ass back into jail for violating your probation if you get me that gin. <laughs> well, that might not make sense. <laughs> it did, sure don't, but none of this does. So I'd be exactly. happy to go get you some gin. So I don't. A lot go of carbon back monoxide fumes out here in the traffic. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Yeah, out, All right. Tag out. Tag out, Joshua. Bring back Mindy. <laughs> so I understand you out on parole, and so. Just so you know that bygones are bygones, I'm going to let you in on my little enterprise. I'm trading gin for piccolos. Gin for men named piccolo? Is that what you mean, Miss Karen? Look, I can't get specific about it with you. Okay. You are on parole. But. Help, he's I captured me. <laughs> you hush, you. You uh, hush. I, you now, know, this I, looks like fun, Miss Karen. Uh, not again. Now, look. Now, what I need you to do, so we're, so we're even Stephen friends, I'm going to let you take the piccolo to Mr. Kilcox. <laughs> and then all will be forgiven. We'll be best friends forever. And, and I'll make sure you me up. never go back to jail. What? I would never do such a thing. Now, just take just take Mr. Piccolo to Mr. Kilcox. All right. I'll take y'all Piccolo to Mr. Kilcox. Oh, wait. You've lifted me because I've turned small. <laughs> That's right. She turned me into a small statue. You're holding me. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm so confused. But yes, you're Mr. Piccolo. That's the thing. Hi. Hi, my name is Mindy. I'm going to take you Mr. Kilcox, okay? Oh, no. <laughs> my wife did this to me years ago. I never love it down. Here, let me do I'm going to just put you in here for a oh, second. Oh, shit. Well, <laughs> all right. Mr. Kilcox. 
Mr. Kilcox, knock, knock. Oh. Hi, I have something for you from Miss Karen. Here you go, it's Mr. Piccolo. That is the worst looking Piccolo I have ever seen. Hey, look who's talking. I will take this as payment, but I'm going to have to go back and talk to Karen. And by talk, I mean show up and like, you know, kill her and everybody else who has seen my face. I, I, I actually, I'm legally blind. I need to wear glasses. So you're all a blur to me. You know, I, I have a well, note in my back pocket. So. I brought with me my bassoon. Not your bassoon. Mm -hmm. oh. Whoa. <laughs> that, w that one note just caused you to have a fatal attack of gas. <laughs> oh. And now I got to go show Karen my clarinet. Oh, tagging Karen. Yes, Mr. Kilcox, did you get your piccolo? As a you green? thought that I would kill Mr. Bigelow for this piccolo? What's on the piccolo? I I could find on such short notice and within my budget. Those woodwinds, those reeds are so expensive. Now, I'm going to have to tell you what happens to anybody who tries to pawn me off with the guy piccolo instead of an actual piccolo. I'm in Bring in the warden. Warden, the safe word is uh, oboe. The safe word is oboe. And scene. And scene. Very nice, very nice, very nice. Thank you very much, team two. Uh, we had some people join. Unfortunately, we had a small group tonight, so we only had two teams. We had two teams of 25 minutes each. So that, that, that's it for our for our jam portion. We have our headliners coming up in just a little bit. <laughs> but before then, you ever wonder what's on the menu here at in Inner City? Well, I'm here to share what's on the menu. We have our Sunday jam. That's what you're at. You know about it. Right, just a little bit. We have Crate. Uh, Kristen and uh, and Kate. That makes Crate. <laughs> Yay! Next week, we have Burnett Brigade. That, that, that's our headliner. Woohoo! We, after that, formal bonfire from Westside Improv, Ryan Subby's uh, home. And the week after that, Portman 2, Jay Hart and Rick Horner. Rick, Jay, Rick Horner, very good friend of ours. And, of course, we have our Etsy page. You can buy a T-shirt with our swag on it. And, of course, if you have a team, if you have a sketch, if you are a music director, if you know other jammers that want to jam online with us, please let us know. Let them know. We have a community page. And uh, that's about it. Did our headliners come back? They are back. And uh, oh, wait, before our headliners come on, I wanted to put out if anybody has anything they want to plug. Anything, any sh upcoming shows, any upcoming Donovan uh, Santiago. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, great jam as always. Uh, if you ever want to be on some of my shows, uh, I'm putting the link in the chat. You can join a Facebook group I run. So I do like virtual readings and improv shows. Uh, so all you have to do is join and comment if you're free and then you'll just be on it if you're free that day in time. Uh, simple as that. So come play in the shows. 
and do and yeah, uh, that's all. Thanks. Yeah, a lot of fun, especially as Honey Bunny Jams. Do that every Thursday. Thank you. Anybody else got anything to promote? Anybody? And there's Don putting in a number. Don is I'm Don and I'm muted. That's that's my hotel number. If anybody's <laughs> interested and has nothing better to do after the jam, I'm. Um, but if no one shows up, I'm just going to call room service and get myself an expensive cocktail and go to sleep. Order a piccolo. Or a pickle, <laughs> which is a throwback to the original, which I kept trying to get in, but no one would allow me to get in to put the pickle in. So whatever. Does this um, one look like Don? No, not too much. <laughs> not so much. Hmm. Um, the, uh, free, uh, I don't think this one looks like Don. <laughs> yeah, that looks like that. Uh, this doesn't even look like Dawn. They <laughs> definitely don't look like Dawn. Vintage Improv Jam. If anybody in New York wants to do some live jam prov, give me a shout. We're trying to get that back up together. Excellent. Yeah, so Angel, thank what do you, you got? for your time. Angel, what do you got? Ah, yeah. So I'm part of an um, online group called Improfessionals. And every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, we have a um, half an hour show. Uh, so e and it's uh, on the Facebook page, streamed on the Facebook page, Socially Distant Improve. So if uh, you'd like to watch, always, uh, every Monday. <laughs> okay, thank you. Brian? I was going to mention, uh, as you mentioned, Westside, we're doing our grand opening in two weeks, but there are actually a bunch of Chicago theaters that that are doing their openings in the next week or so. So I just want to give a quick shout out to uh, last night I went to the grand opening of the Bit Theater in Aurora, which is another friend of mine just uh, just, just opened. It's a brand new theater. Uh, mm -hmm. Comedy Sport Chicago just restarted their shows in person at the Den Theater downtown or in, well, not downtown, but in, in the city of Chicago. And then uh, the In Productions folks out of Crown Point, Indiana, also just restarted doing live shows. So if you're in any of those areas, look them up because they're all good people. And I uh, just want to live theaters coming back, trying to do it safely. So if you're in the area, let me know. I am in the area and he knows it. Any other any other announcements? Five, four, three, two, one, going, going, gone. Thank you for being a small and powerful group tonight. We really appreciate it. Um, and so now, without further ado, I'd like to hand it over to our headliners for the ease this evening, Kristen and Kate, a.k.a. Crate. Ooh. Thank you, Crate. Ooh. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, hi, hi. I'm Kate. I'm Kristen. And together we are Crate. Um, so I'm Kate and I might be in London, England, um, and I have my local community around me. Kristen, you may be in Austin, Texas, and have your local community around you. We also have this beautiful online community here too. So let's merge all of that together and let's take a look at some of the weird and wonderful characters that we might find in your local community. Hi all, I'm Kylie, and I'm here with my influencing partner, who, um, I mean, there's need of no introduction, but just in case. Um, it's me, it's me, hi, hiya, I'm Kelly, hi, hi, hey. yeah, and we are your local celebrity influencers, as if you didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> we're yeah. like so famous now it's pretty oh, incredible so, so famous and like basically um we, we just wanted to pop on here on this um live facebook live do a facebook live um um uh kylie how many people how many people are watching like how many maybe people? like i i see that there are like three viewers which is like pretty good that's quite good it's quite good three viewers for a facebook live I mean, for a live like we didn't even warn them that we were coming 
Yeah, like people are just literally waiting for us, aren't they? They're just sitting around being like, what are what are Kylie and Kelly up to right now? And that's amazing. <laughs> I mean, it's so good, right? Because like, basically, um, we are here to like, we are influential influencers like locally sure but probably internationally as well we're, right? getting, we're getting towards global for sure like we're, yeah. we're not we're maybe not there but we're we're we don't need we don't need to talk about not being there we're talking right. about oh, maybe okay. we're almost there yeah positivity okay, right. kylie positivity yeah sorry right. you're so zen yeah yeah so i'm a diva obviously and uh kylie's um great and um and basically we like people want us to sell their stuff people are always saying like oh you're such like celebrity local influencers like please tell everyone about our shop our, our things going on didn't they i get i get paid sometimes just to eat breakfast um it's i mean i don't want to i'm just saying i'm like too blessed to be stressed basically Oh, that's nice. That's nice. I like that. I like that. Um, but I'm the one normally with the catchphrases, yeah. Um, so so basically, um, how many how many are watching now? How many are watching? We are up to a full five. Five. Yes, that is brilliant. Oh my god, that is so good. Hi, hi everyone. This is Facebook Live. We're just popping on here just to tell you. So we live in Bruton, right? And everybody loves Bruton. And we're here to help some local community people, help local businesses, shop local, all of that, in the hope that like we will be more international, but we'll do local for now, right? We are like the town mascots. Like, let me tell you something. Like at the school sports games, they they mostly cheer for us and like not for the teams. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But like some people said that like I look like a mascot in my jacket, and I take that as a real compliment. Well, that's because the mascots are woolly mammoth. I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah, but they're like really fashionable too, though. True. I've Definitely True. on the oh, catwalks, true. catwalks recently, I've definitely seen, like, I think it was Dior, like, had some kind of, like, woolly mammoth, like, model woman, like, walking down and she was, like, the hip, so I'm really fashionable on trend, so, like, yeah, thanks. Yeah. All right, yeah, yeah thanks, Kylie. Um, so, basically, um, yeah, that's it. So, like, if you want to get in touch with us, if you want to let us know anything that you might want us to um, sell, promote, then we've got lots coming up for you already. Um, yeah, Kylie, do you want to say something? We have reviewed so many great products this week, like that are so fun and I can't wait to share them with you. Some of them are just, they will leave a lasting mark on your life. Some of them permanently and sometimes not even <clears throat> optional. Just if you use them, that's it, so. Yeah. Thanks, Kylie. So, um, so what we've got, somebody has um, written a post. Um, I'm just gonna, because it's, you know, it's up to us. We are uh, like gonna be here to tell you what's going on. So, so someone has, um, um, a lady called Kat has left um, a, a post here saying, free, if anyone can make use of these, light blue chiffon dress, size 10, worn only once but as you can see got quite stained might be cleanable or maybe could be taken up turned into something else whiskey tins empty of whiskey i'm afraid <laughs> that's funny thought they might be good for a craft project we used to store dolls clothes in whiskey tins when i was little that's really helpful really helpful post there for the community It's hard for me to talk about what happened that night. What happened to those dresses? Well, I can't keep it in any longer. The truth is I've got to get it out because I'm giving those dresses away. Giving them away and getting rid of them forever. What happened? Whiskey happened. Whiskey happens like it happens at every wedding. So, so predictable. And yet I, the bride in my pie eyed, happiest moment didn't realize how drunk each and every single one of those goddamn darn groomsmen had gotten until it was too late. 
Suddenly, things that were not a good idea sounded like a very good idea. And by that I mean, hey guys, who's in the mood for a run on Duncan? Who wants donuts at a wedding? We have cake. They wanted donuts and they wanted the messiest kind, jelly donuts, Bavarian creams. They wanted icings. They wanted loud neon icings. And every single one of my girls who I would have thought was on the keto diet or at minimum was no carbs, went with them. Who drove, luckily, the chauffeur, the, the bus chauffeur, whatever guy, he drove them. There was no danger there, but somehow, as if they had been in some sort of a turbulent thing, they came back, each and every single one of them, head to toe as if they had dipped themselves in a vat of high fructose corn syrup. And let me tell you something, those dresses, they're haunted by that experience. Hiya, yeah, back, back, back. So, so um, we're here, just wanted to pop on another Facebook Live. Just wanted to pop on and tell you about a few things um, that we have been reviewing this week. Um, I mean, my dad uh, is actually a local celebrity in Bruton. Um, he is the... He's so um, he, Sorry? I said he's so famous. Like, so yeah. Famous. Thank you. Yeah, yeah he's yeah, he's really famous, and um, it's uh, he, he's 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 in the but he's got a butcher's a butcher's shop, uh, and it's Collins Meat Shop. Now he is a local celebrity around here, and that just automatically makes me a celebrity as well, and that's why a lot of people uh know me. But um, he's actually got a deal at the moment on sausages, um, which would be um, you get normally. 10 links of sausages for £2.99 and you're going to get 20. So you're going to get double the amount if you buy some sausages with if, if uh, I, if I may, If I may interject with just the tiniest personal testimonial for Collins Meats. I woke up the other day and I was starving. I was so hungry and I needed sausage or capicola or maybe like a sopressata. I needed something and I didn't know what. And I was very... Um, unsure and insecure and I walked right in there and 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 he just looked right in my eyes and he said you you need prosciutto and I, I swear it was magical thanks Kylie yeah so as you can see um he, he, he is the god of meat around here so go and get your sausages or your prosciutto um and bargain prices and uh he's just on the corner of bruton street and the high street yeah yeah oh look oh we've got another post in okay i'm gonna read this one it says <clears throat> from joanne something hi all before i look to buy does anyone have a baby monitor they're looking to sell Ideally, a camera one. Also, a white noise machine. Thanks. That's pretty fun. Super fun. Sorry. Yeah, good. Hiya. Yeah. Um, I just, uh, uh, I'm just doing uh, some personal projects um, myself. Uh, I like to, uh, I like to make films. Um, I like to make films uh, in in my house, and sometimes at the local cemetery. Um, I like horror. I like horror films. Um, and uh, what I really my my, my next one is uh, I, I need I need some kind of like uh, uh, recording equipment. Um, but I really wanted like a baby monitor. You know, because like in that horror film, you know, like where they have the camera in the room and then you see all of the things that are going on in the room and it's like all all like fuzzy and stuff. And then like you get the white noise thing and then like you see it and then you're like, oh, oh, what's going on there? And then if you're lucky, if you watch it, either you fast forward it or you rewind it, you'll see that there's some kind of ghost. 
Yeah, that's what I want to do, right? I want to try and recapture, redo that and capture some kind of ghost. Um, but actually, I'm going to do it in my mum and dad's house because I don't want to do it in my house just in case I see something because then I won't want to live there no more. Um, so I'll do it in my mum and dad's house. So at the moment, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put out there like like on Facebook that like I need like a baby monitor um, and like a white noise machine thing um and like but i'm not gonna say what it's for because like a lot of parents need that for their babies but i i, I just want it for my horror film um, i think that we all can identify with that um honestly i'll tell you what i've been haunted by the ghost of bruton so many times it's been kind of extraordinary but in a good way Sometimes I wake up and there's somebody just standing over my bed staring at me and I wonder, is this right? But hmm. hi again. Hi, Kelly. Uh, hi. Yeah, but like Bruton, Bruton's not haunted though, like generally, is it? It's no. like a really nice place to live and people should come here, shouldn't they? Right. Of course. And that is antithetical to ghosts. So. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, what she said. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. I mean, um, d like recently too. Um, I just wanted to tell you about the local hairdressers. Um, yeah. I love Kylie. the salon. The yeah. salon is amazing. The salon, Kylie. How many? How many live Facebook lives? How many we got? How many looking? How many we're watching? Down, we're down at four again. What we lost one. I think they probably had to go to the bathroom. Like oh, sometimes oh. I just can't like hold it. That's probably the only reason. Okay, right. So we've got to get back up at least to five. Right, okay. Um, Just the other day, Kelly and I had the good fortune to um to get to treat it to an all access pass at the salon and they did both of our hair and um they used their new pumpkin spice straightener on it. Oh my god. Yeah. So the pumpkin spice thing the the straightener it's like a straightener and a tong in one and it's so amazing because it's coming up to halloween isn't it so like so you see this and it looks great it's orange and uh it's got a pumpkin it's shaped like a pumpkin ain't it yeah it, it looks it looks a lot like a pumpkin yeah which you looks might like look at and think that that's difficult to use on your hair but um a lot you get used to it after probably about the first week or so using it don't you it smells yeah well this is this is the thing so um it, it, we thought that it actually did have um the smell of uh well kylie thought it had the smell of pumpkin spice uh and a bonfire um and unfortunately we did work out afterwards that that was just her scalp burning yeah. um yeah it was a mistake the, it's just the, the smell to smell like pumpkin spice yeah and so I'm, be careful when you use it just try not to get too near your scalp um because I'm, it will burn you i'm not sure if you noticed this because it's very subtle but i am wearing a wig um I, I wouldn't notice I wouldn't no, notice because really. unfortunately Kylie does have quite a, a large part of her hair and scalp missing just now but so it was an accident it's just because she's not used to using them but I would totally promote them I promote uh, them I'm sorry I promote them I promote yes. them and I love them and I would singe off the rest of my hair if I had to just yes. for that smell exactly lovely and they are um on offer at the moment if you get your hair cut um at the hair salon then you get the pumpkin straighteners uh for uh 29.99 and when a professional uses it on you it, it's much less likely to singe so yeah exactly and they wear gloves themselves which then protects their own hands from Just, from any yeah. yeah from any kind of uh, uh injuries basically that's right that's right now um we've got another post in here that i just need it's another mm -hmm. announcement um we have a post from xavier 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 um and they said whatever happened to the Bruton Healthy Streets Group. I don't know. I don't know what did happen to the Bruton Healthy Streets Group. I just don't know. You ask me. 
What happened to Bruton Healthy Streets Group? I cannot tell you. I cannot tell you because it is classified information or close enough to be classified. Because let me tell you something. Some people, they don't want healthy streets. They don't want healthy streets, no matter how you define a healthy street. Is a healthy street filled with happy families? Is a healthy street filled with robust concrete? Is a healthy street just simply one that has been well planned out by a civic planner? It doesn't matter. The forces, the dark forces will come on. They will, they will agglomerate by themselves in the side shadows and they will come out and they will ruin your fundraising efforts and they will destroy your attempts for a community pickup day. And let me tell you something, this, the forces that be, the powers that be, they hate a Facebook fundraising campaign more than they hate anything else on this earth. What happened to the Bruton Healthy Streets campaign? I'll tell you what. What didn't happen to the Bruton Healthy Streets campaign? Well, I mean, there's some right conversations going on on that post. Blinking heck. I mean, the thing is, there's some weird and wonderful people out there. I'm so I'm so glad that I'm so normal. God. Well, the thing is, I mean, the healthy, Bruton Healthy Streets campaign, Healthier Streets, Healthy Streets campaign group. I mean, really, we should have been going for the safer uh, healthy streets uh, group first of all because there's been lots of people plowed down by local tractors you know so, nobody talks about that that's a true thing i actually um i am myself a victim of a rogue tractor attack you are aren't you kylie you've only just kind of got a bit re like recovered from that and then you had the unfortunate scout burning incident you have been through the wars there's quite a bit of, a bit of trauma associated yeah but you know what that's part of influencing and i wouldn't give it up for for the world i would just keep on influencing from my deathbed that's right thank you kylie because the thing is with all of our fans and all the people that are, we're influencing like how many how many are watching now six six we've gained two we've got one back and then gained one really but all really gained two that's like, all of these game. thank you you do the maths she's the brains on the beauty oh. <laughs> so um so like all of these people like all of you watching now um and all of the people like looking like hanging on like our every word on the edge of their seat waiting to see what we're gonna be influencing um about um you know we have to share our experiences with you you know because like it's it's really it, it, it's like we're human too we're human speaking, too speaking of experiences i wanted to share one that is really special okay my partner and i retreated this weekend to a relaxing massage down at the Bruton Spa, which, as you know, is newly reopened after the health department closures. They have cleaned it on up. They are not storing toxins on the premises anymore. Oh, it that's good. Like can, we, can we actually call it now a spa? It because we couldn't officially spa. call it that, could we? Because it, it was kind of not really, it was just like a room with oh. like murky, Oh, yeah, there was something to be desired, but now it smells like lavender. We have another post. I want to make sure we get it in. Oh, it's yeah, from yeah. Lindsay something. And it says, um, does anyone know a Luke Fox locally just found his wallet on Staplehurst Road? That's interesting. Staplehurst. I remember that place. I've been there before. I just, I get distracted. I'm like, oh, Luke Fox. I think I know that name. All right. Luke Fox here. Been doing a few deals locally, you know, uh, buying, selling, borrowing. Selling a few cats recently. Yeah, that's right. Cats. People love cats. Are they my cats? Who knows? No one's going to ask. Because I'm Luke Fox. I've got a dog. Where's it from? Who knows? Don't ask. I'm Luke Fox. 
want a pair of shoes, brogues, or a pair of Nike Max? I got them. Where did I get them? Who knows? Don't ask. I'm Luke Fox. But I have got a problem. I've lost my wallet. What a curse to have everything you could ever want except for your wallet. Because then you can't have more stuff that you could ever want, you know? And that's really a shame. Being an influencer sometimes in Bruton can be hard because we come to know people like Luke Fox who don't have everything they want, so. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right, that's sad, isn't it? How many, how we many, like we got how many, how many? You're not gonna believe it. Oh my God, how many? We're up to 12. Flipping heck. This is going to scratch, Eric. This is well, if we've got that many, then we should uh, finish up on the uh, the uh, eco friendly sustainable shop. Uh, Bruton's newest edition. Uh, basically, they're really eco friendly. They're called eco friendly shop. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I love it when they're just so simple. And right? Just, this is what it is. And I'm like, oh, thank you. Because I do not understand puns <laughs> at all, no. even a little bit. Oh, no, it is funny, isn't it? We both don't get the puns, not do we? Um, but you're really good at maths or math. Um, so, yeah, this eco friendly shop. Basically, what I would say is um, if you want any lovely coffee, uh actual real coffee you can go in there but they don't allow plastic bags so um don't get caught short like i did yeah. i went in there and wanted some coffee and they just poured it into my hands they're um, like they're like wild animals about it they'll chase you around they'll like form a pack around you and they'll they'll nip at your heels if you've got even one plastic bag on your person so i just recommend you go in there with nothing but paper or otherwise reusable materials. Yeah, and I, and I would also say we both together walked past there and stood outside just to chat for a few seconds. I had a plastic bag in my pocket Blood and they knew, they knew, they asked us to, they came out and they asked and us to move like, on. Even though they pay us, they pay us to, 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 to hype their brand. But they asked us to leave. No, they don't pay us. No, no, no. We just love, we love them. I'm just saying that was the craziest thing that's happened to us, at least this week. Yeah. But, you know, we love them. And we, we it was just a little misunderstanding. And uh, we'll never have plastic bags on us again, will we? Speaking of little misunderstandings, like, I wanted to talk to you on air. I noticed that next week there's a booking at the Bruton spot for for my partner and you at the same time. I just wanted to make sure that it was like a mix up or something. Oh, me and Jason. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah, no, we need to, um, we're just going to be talking about um, uh, your surprise birthday party. <gasps> oh, my birthday's in six months. You guys care about me so much. We really care about you. And when you saw us last week together, we, also, we were just starting to talk about your surprise birthday party so yeah we're, we're very dedicated to the cause god Bruton is not big enough for my heart right now because it is six sizes too big i love you so much you're welcome better better start planning that um surprise party so um anyway um that's that's fine that, that we've we've run out of uh, time for this facebook live because i've got to go and help my dad with his sausages um and uh like just join us again next time on our next facebook live when we'll be talking about everything in your local community i'm kelly and i'm kylie and i'm gonna go get a new birthday outfit okay bye guys bye, bye. <laughs> Hey, let's go, Jamal. Nice job. Yeah. Come on, well done. Jake, come on back up. Come on back up. I want to ask you, ask you two some questions.
Uh, obviously, I, I I hear where the name comes from, but you guys are from opposite ends of the uh, the earth. It looks like how do you two co come together? Um, we actually we both are part of uh, different teams uh, for Queen Cities like Global Impro uh, Improv Project. Excellent. You get to do like if you're in one of those like you get to they have all kinds of fun shows you can participate in, and one of them is a duo show where you get randomly matched up. And I we did I thought in my opinion the most brilliant set, so we were like let's let's do it yeah we just hit it off and after that one set we were just like should we just be a duo and we were like yeah why not i mean anything's possible with this whole global um mm -hmm. improv scene now which is amazing so yeah then we were like let's do it and crate was born got it do either of you have anything you'd like to plug any shows or anything you guys have either of you have coming up uh, I'll leave it to Kate because Kate has got a lot of really good stuff because she runs her own improv company, which I highly recommend coming to check out. Yeah, thank you very much. I I do. If you want to check out allmadeupimprov.com, um, mm -hmm. then that's my improv company with, with uh, lots of workshops and different um weekly uh drop-ins going on, and I've got a set of um accent workshops coming up as well, which is a collab with uh, a lady called Chloe English, who is a Lambda trained accent coach, and she's going to be doing rp standard british um and also general american um uh and it's like going to be a series of three workshops basics and then uh scene study in that accent and then improvising in that accent as well and then uh that all the information's on the website and also tomorrow on monday at six o'clock i have um a back to basics uh boot camp which is just weekly drills 75 minutes of just get in back to basics of all your favorite improv stuff and and like just basically getting back to basics as the title um said so yeah that's super fun well. like super fun anyway yeah like, excellent mm -hmm. thank you both very much please stick around we have a fun a uh, couple of fun yeah. things before like, we like, uh yeah. say good night but if you turn off cameras for now thank you uh th i want to thank uh this has been a, a short a small but powerful uh a lot of our friends are at Camp Improv Utopia in Yosemite right now. Uh, they'll be back hopefully next week. We'll, have, uh, we'll be back next week stronger than stronger than ever. But this was a great group. Uh, we always end with a line game. And I put it out to the chat, but um, I decided to call an audible and play my favorite one, which normally is a singing uh, line game, but we don't have to do it singing. It's just raised by wolves. I was raised by a family of wolves. How? Doesn't matter. I, I was oh. right back down to wolves in the punchline, but it's not wolves. It's uh, we put something else in. Uh, give me a, uh, give me a, uh, a, uh, a very strange occupation that somebody has that you know. Taxidermist. A taxidermist. That's a great. I was I was raised by a taxidermist. I was raised by a family of taxidermists. Punchline. I was raised by a family of taxidermists. You should have seen the stuffing on Thanksgiving. I was raised by a family of taxidermists. They always told me to just get stuffed. But um, um, there you go. I was raised by a family of taxidermists, and they, I just never felt at home in my own skin. <laughs> Pop on up. I'll call on you if you got one. Uh, raised by taxidermists. Raised by taxidermists. We were raised by a family of taxidermists. Yeah. Brian. I, I was raised by a family of taxidermists, and... Uh, to get through that, you need a real stiff drink. <laughs> Go for it, Angel. I was raised by a family of taxidermists, and now to prove them my gratitude, I drive a taxi every day. Any others? Don. I was raised by a family of taxidermists. I barely got through. <laughs> I was raised by a family of taxidermists. I was mounted at uh, the New York hunting slot. <laughs> just the head, just the chest up. I, woo, okay. I was I was raised by a family of taxidermists, and my favorite song is Oasis, "Live Forever." <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let's change it up. Who's uh, let's uh, change it up to a uh, item you would find in a garage sale. A sp 
spanner. A spanner. That's also a uh, screwdriver, right? Or is that also a wrench? Oh, might be a wrench, yeah. A wrench. Wrench. <laughs> I was raised by, we were raised by a family of wrenches. I was raised by a family of wrenches. The black sheep of the family, the ones who were the ones in metric. I was raised by a family of wrenches. Uh, we were always comparing the size of tools. <laughs> Ryan. Uh, I was raised by a family of spanners and you know, we had a lot of kids. There's always a spanner in the works. <laughs> I was raised by a family of wrenches and uh, my mum always said I wasn't the sharpest tool in the box. Yeah, I was raised by a family of wrenches. My mom always said, quit monkeying around. I was raised by a family of wrenches. We just loved us some nuts. <laughs> raised by wrenches. Raised by I wrenches. was raised by a family of wrenches. I always told my mom she should loosen up. Um, I was raised by a family of wrenches, and my psychoanalyst said I'm screwed. <laughs> I was raised by a family of wrenches. Our enemy was WD-40. <laughs> All right, let's get another one. Let's get another. Uh, I, I always like uh, the the weird occupations. Any other weird occupations? Astrologist. 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 <clears throat> I was raised by a family of astrologists. I was raised by a family of astrologists, and that day in hospital, my mum said, a star is born. <laughs> yeah. I was raised by a family of astrologists. Every time I saw a pie, I said, Pisces! <laughs> we can't all be winners. <laughs> Ashley, I can't see you. That's a nice camera. With a <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's, I don't know what's going on. That, but I was raised by a family of astrologists and we were all a little spacey. <laughs> I was raised by a, what was it? A family of astrologists. It was under the moon of cantankerous. <laughs> I was raised by a family of astrologists. It was in the age of Aquarius. Age of Aquarius. Oh, keep going, Brian. No one to come. <laughs> I literally don't know the rest of that song. Thank you. That goes pretty good. I was raised by a, fa a family of astrologists. Uh, they were like, "You're an Aries. Wow, what an asshole." That's a jerk. <laughs> raised by a family of astrologists. We used to watch all the uh, scary movies through uh, our uh, through our telescope. It was our horoscope. Oh, nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the way it works. Yeah. That's the way it works. Who's got one to top that? Because that was a horrible one. That was. <laughs> you, I, okay, I'll do Go for it, Karen. I was raised by a family of astrologists. My youth was out of this world. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> raised by wolves. Thank you very much. All right, hey. Uh, there are a lot of volunteers that helped us out tonight. Angel and uh, Angel and Brian, we all took care of it behind the And we also had Donovan and, and Jennifer helping out with time. Yay! Yay. Woo. Woo. Um, and I think this is about the end. Unfortunately, it's been fun. It's been real. And it's been real fun as well. Everyone come on screen for group pictures. We can say goodbye to the Facebook yeah, Everybody screen. turn on the camera yeah. for our group picture. Thank you. Somebody take that picture. We're all here. They're all there. Thank you. All right. Right. all right. And this has been the Long City, Inner City Long Form Improv Jam. Yeah. 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 Yeah.